Hello, this is Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. This time, we're going to continue in kind of the series that started a couple of uh, videos ago where we dealt with TCP dump, and now we're going to move on to T Shark. Now, T Shark is one that some of you may be familiar with, and if not, you'll see why here in just a second. T Shark is the command line version of something that I'm sure a lot are familiar with by the name of Wireshark. This is something that Gerald Combs uh, was involved with many years ago, and it has really grown into a quite useful product that you'll see folks like Laura Chapel doing sessions on and really showing you how to get into the hood and make it sing. T Shark has one advantage, and we're going to get to that over the next uh, series of videos where you can use it as a remote probe. So instead of having to transfer the files off like we showed with TCP dump, you can actually talk to a remote device that's running T Shark and automatically bring the data over into Wireshark. Now there will be some limitations since the Raspberry Pi only has a hundred meg interface. You're not going to be able to do this in you know heavy production situations because you're going to overrun the interface and it's not going to be able to see everything. But at least from a lab situation or a low volume situation, that certainly is is going to be an option. So let's go ahead and get started. Now that we've got our screen up on the Raspberry Pi, we'll go ahead and start down the process of getting T-Shark installed. So just like I have done in the past, I will do a search to make sure we've got the right name. It helps if you spell it right, by the way. And we'll do a sudo apt cache search T-Shark. Now, what I've done to save a little bit of time is before I start anything, I always do a sudo space apt-get space update and that way it gets the latest files down so that when you actually go to an install it knows what the latest versions are and where it needs to go get them so in this case we've got uh, two files showing up we've got t shark itself and then we've got a common uh, library file that t shark is going to make calls in and out of and for those of you uh, this is not that hard to do and we'll just take it one step at a time so we'll do a sudo apt get install t shark and it's going to go out and figure out all the dependencies what it's going to have to have and in this case it lists a whole series of files right in here a guip database and everything it's going to need to get up and running so we'll just say yes and it'll start downloading now for those of you who have not worked with wireshark at all or a lot guip is probably something you haven't heard about and what that is it's a database that is periodically updated so that if you're looking for uh, 34.5.15.10 you may find that say in eastern malaysia assigned to a particular isp now sometimes you can't get much further than that because not all ISPs subdelegate their ip address assignments goa ip may not always be right but at least it's a starting point and that's one uh, advantage that IPv6 has is it is already pre-assigned by continent and in some cases uh, they may have even started breaking it down by country so that that will uh, you know have a little different difference there but not uh, a whole lot but it's it's going uh, right through the process of getting installed so it's generally doesn't take that long to uh, to get it up and running and we're just about to get finished here. And then once it gets through getting this, uh, the last file now it's getting to the Wireshark com and went through right through that. So and see, as you can see right here, you know, we're talking, you know, barely over a minute to uh, to get it downloaded. So we're going to start unpacking things and, and doing whatever compiling needs to be done. Like I said, it's just marching right through it. And this is where I found that your SD cards that are a type 10 car which is normally what you'd see used for a camcorder seem at least for me and your mileage may vary that it's going to run faster in raspberry pi versus a class 4 which is you know, a little bit cheaper or even some of the ones that don't have a class number on them so you know those are going to run even a little bit slower so it's just a matter of you know what you can get a hold of and what happens to be in your budget and you can always buy faster cards but sometimes that's not needed for, for what you're doing. 
and we're just about to get through here. It's going to do its uh, work on getting T Shark all compiled. So we should be back at the command prompt here, or shell prompt, excuse me. My old DOS days come back every once in a while. So now at this point, let's go ahead and we'll do a first capture. And, you know, I know the interface on the Raspberry Pi is ETH0. Okay, it says there's no capture interfaces that it can work with. Well, let's just do T Shark and let, and let it auto select just in case I did type something wrong. Okay, same thing. Now, th I did this for a reason, and this is so that you can see what will happen if you don't do one little step, and that's with Raspbian. You need to preface this by putting sudo in front, and it should start capturing here in just a second. Now, that's going to give you the warning about running as root, but you know, this exercise is not a problem, and you see it's already capturing information, so that's good. And we'll tell it to stop. Now, at this point, uh, we can go ahead and actually redirect it out to a file. So sudo t shark, uh, in this case, we'll do dash w capture dot cap. Now, it's saying that it, uh, it's got a permissions problem, and this is something I've run up against and haven't found exactly what the cause is, but I have found a way to work around it. And for a single-use situation like this, this is not going to be a problem. You know, like anybody, I like to have a directory structure to work with, but at this point, to get you up and running, we'll just put it out in the root of the file system. And we should start capturing in just a minute. And it's not going to show you what it's capturing, but you see the counter down here in this in the lower part of the screen, and it's actually showing you what it's coming up with. So at that point, we'll just do a control C to finish. And we'll do an LS and then the forward slash, and you see the capture.cap sitting there. And if you want to get a little more information, you can do LS space dash all. And it will then proceed to tell us nothing because I needed to do ls space forward slash space dash all. Now it's pointing in the right directory. So this shows you a pretty decent little capture file. And that's, you know, you're, you're basically capturing at that point. Now, we haven't gotten into writing signatures. We'll do that in the next installment of this. But meanwhile, I'll show you how to do just a brief capture of, well, we'll say uh, 100 packets. And we'll just do the dash, whoops, forgot a step here, dash C space and the 100 space and then dash W. And remember like we did before, this time we'll call it capture1.cap. So we don't overwrite and lose the previous capture. And we'll get the process started. And it should come up here in just a second. And, it, you know, it's again, it's showing the counter like you, you saw in the past. And then as soon as we see, see it hit the magic number 100, it automatically stops and goes on. So it's T-Shark is a, is a very nice uh, package. It has some similarities to TCB dump, but in this case... It gets you into a file and you're used to the same command structure that you're going to have within Wireshark. And, and that's worth considering. You know, either way, whether you use TCP dump or T Shark, you know, you're at least capturing. But, you know, depending on your situation, you may want to look at, uh, at using T Shark. Well, I've got some other videos planned in this. We'll do one on doing some signatures or excuse me, filters so that you can filter down to just what you're wanting to capture. Now, that's a process if you've not done filters before, either display filters or capture filters. In this case, it would be a capture filter because we're not going to be displaying what we're looking at at the same time as we would with the GUI version of Wireshark. You don't want to get too specific. It's going to be a series of you know of, of trial and error because you want to start with as wide a filter as you can until you've identified exactly what you're looking for and then you can get very specific so you may want to let T shark be just a global catch everything grab it all and then you can do the finessing 
in Wireshark. That way, you've got everything that came across the wire, and then you could try different versions of the filters to see. You know, it may show you something that you would have missed otherwise by by being too specific on your filtering. And this brings us to the end of another podcast. Appreciate everyone's time and watching this as well as reading the accompanying post that's on my website to see the other videos I've done in the Raspberry Pi and other series and the articles that I've done with them please visit my website at www.ronnutter.com if you have any questions or have any requests you'd like me to look at in a future video you can contact me uh, uh, via the uh, contact me button on the website and I'll be glad to do what I can for you thank you again for your time